All right, ladies and gentlemen, another workshop Tuesday. Uh, this time I've got Jim with me and a rather interesting Lopi fan kit. Uh, we don't get too many of these in the shop, so we wanted to do a video. This is from a Lopi Freedom Bay unit. Um, pretty similar to the standard Lopi Freedom, with the exception of these large wings, the placement of the rheostats a little different. Um, temperature sensor, which you can kind of see in the back is in the same spot. Uh, mounting hole locations are the same. So pretty much the exact same kit as the Freedom, uh, but with the extension, these extensions here, they're just for aesthetic. Um, but what I'm gonna have Jim do is, we've already taken a few steps ahead of the video, just so it's not a super long video. Uh, we removed a couple of the rivets, um, which we do pretty easily here. You can see we've pre-drilled out of these just in, just in an attempt to save some time. Um, do that with a standard basic drill. You don't need anything fancy, a drill bit will take them out. And we're gonna do this in real time as best we can, um, just to give you guys an idea of what's kind of involved in a, in a repair start to finish. And as Jim's kind of working, I'll just start pointing out some, some stuff that we, we typically see with these guys. So um, original blowers, not a terribly bad original blower. Um, some of the initial problems in the early model blowers was is that most of them were using brass leaf bearings uh, hard to tell from this guy until we actually take it out uh, one of the bigger problems we see is kind of the use of the plastic wheels in the original blowers uh, a lot of times these things were not they're inserted on the shaft and glued on the shaft sometimes so they get loose you get ember intrusion ash intrusion the operating temperatures these things are are typically running in is very high so the plastic wheels don't hold up as as well as we would like them to so uh, a couple of the tools you need while Jim's kind of working there. Again, basic drill and a drill bit. Uh, Phillips tip, Phillips tip screw. We'll eventually use some wire cutters. We're going to need a couple of additional terminals because we're going to strip some old wires off. Um, if you were to buy the replacement blowers from us, uh, we have a, available like an optional hardware package that you can add where we include a bunch of these, the connectors that you're going to need some of these black oxidized screws. We like using those in lieu of having the original rivets in place. Um, just gives for a tighter, more snug fit, and it also makes servicing the blowers down line a little easier for you. Uh, good wire strippers, crimper, and then Jim's already got one of the original blowers removed, so you can start to see some of the kind of years on these blowers. Um, they'll try spinning the wheel. And this is another thing that we get to is that they just start to lock up. You'll actually see how that wheel should be kind of centered into that cavity. And so the shafts will start to get bent over time. Wheels get dilapidated and, and bent. So we'll discard that. So all Jim is doing in this particular case is cutting the motor leads as pretty close to the motor as possible. Leaves them with as much available wire as possible. Flip that over once, Jim. And if you look at the motor on the outside. That's ball bearing or sleeve bearing. Yeah, that looks to me like a, a sleeve bearing. So um, yeah, these are kind of, what happens here is obviously we can get a lot of du well, this dust and debris that you're seeing is getting caked into those bearings. So over time, um, the bearings are gonna get fatigued. Um, it's very difficult to service these guys. So just, which is another reason why servicing the blowers, occasionally cleaning them is, is definitely recommended. So Jim is just gonna strip a couple, each of the wires. Uh, these wires can be reconnected to the motors in any particular order. The motors are non-polar, so there's no like positive or negative. And you'll see these nice guys that we're gonna put in here. Um, we'll just put a few wires on. Let's point out a couple of things. Yeah, really nice ball bearing. Metal wheels. They're actually properly seated to the shaft. So you're not gonna get distortion. These things are really well balanced. When we get a blower kit from a customer, what we'll do is we'll bench test it first just to kind of confirm all of the problems. Um, in this particular one, I wish we would have gotten in the video. If we ran it, the blowers were, were very off balance. Um, the wheels are a little misaligned, so that's gonna cause kind of like a resonation in the motors. And it just, it makes for a loud blower assembly. And so you'll see when we eventually get these guys installed, we'll run it after we're done that these things are really finely tuned, super well balanced. Okay, 
come around. Give you a little view kind of of the, the shop here. We've got some GFK4 kits for heat elator fireplaces getting made. You'll see We're just taking those two leads that we, we took off. We're just putting a couple of new female terminals on them. We're using female terminals on the leads here because the blowers will have male terminal flying leads coming off the motors. A couple other things to point out. You'll, you'll see the power cord comes in. You'll see these Molex plugs. There's actually two on each side, um, and that's because the power cords on these guys can be reversed. So in some cases, the power cord needs to be mounted on the left side or the right side, depending on how you're looking at the stove. So it is perfectly okay for one side to have a loose Molex connector. And that's the variable speed controller, which we are also going to replace. It's working properly, um, but it looks a little tattered, so we'll replace that with the new speed controller. And we tested the thermostat sensor, and the thermostat sensor is working perfectly fine. And so we'll do continuity tests on those, make sure they actually heat cycle properly. And so there's no need for the customer to have to get a new thermostat sensor in this case. Another thing we do too is eventually after we get blowers mounted and stuff here, we do a thorough cleaning on these guys and we put them through the paint booth. So we like to try to give you back uh, as clean of a unit as we possibly can. So what Jim is doing in this case is making sure that the blower is here. Maybe just try to get a better view. Jim's done a lot of these. Sometimes, sometimes, yeah, it it can be a little tricky. Sometimes, it, depending on the, the kit that you're working on, having a second hand sometimes helps. Now, these are relatively large, so they're they're typically pretty easy to work on. And so you'll notice here that the blower in this case, the flange of the blower kind of seats up next to the housing here, so we want to make sure they're aligned properly. Doesn't hurt to take a, a before picture of your original unit just so you understand where the original blowers need to be lined up. Uh, these stoves can have like specifically placed placed air intakes. So positioning of the blowers oftentimes matters. Yeah, no magic to it. Um, so that's it for replacing the blowers. That was actually pretty easy. There's kind of this cover plate. So after you take the rivets off, the cover plate kind of gets removed here. And then we gotta replace these screws. And then once this done is we will we'll show you guys how we swap out the speed controllers.
Okay. So we're going to first remove it. There's a threaded locking washer. Jim, what size wrench is that? Just 11 16 11 16 We don't like keeping any additional connectors that are unnecessary in here, just another failure point. So we'll remove these guys so we know that we've got one clean connection. wire strippers but they can be a little tricky to use. Yeah, pain in the butt sometimes. Yeah, your wire lead needs to be a little long. There we go. And so we'll replace that with a, a really nice high quality KB Electronics controller. Uh, the original controller is also KB Electronics. stem is going to just fit through. We'll turn it around. We'll put that threaded washer on. It's kind of like a self-threaded washer. Nut. So the shaft, yeah, the, yeah, nut, excuse me. So all you have to do is just kind of twist it on and kind of self-thread, self-threads. Yeah, we remove the cable clamp to work on it. Oh, that's another thing we do. There's a plastic cable clamp. We'll remove that. It's a good point, Jim. Made. We'll remove that. It gives you a little more articulation of the power cord when you're working on it. Um, these are also kind of a pain. <laughs> Jim's done a few thousand of these, but. Get it in there, give it a little twist, it kind of seats in place. Uh, we'll test it. All right, simple test. Easy way to do this is either take a hair dryer or a heat gun. And what we're going to do is make sure that that speed controller is in the on position. And then we're going to hit that thermostat sensor for a couple of seconds. And that under look, there's like an audible clicking noise. Super well balanced before this thing was vibrated a ton. A couple of additional points. Uh, it is very difficult, but what we would do, these things are vacuum cleaners, so they're going to draw a lot of dust and debris into your house. These are centrifugal style blowers, so they actually draw air in from the sides. 
Um, so we would recommend removing this um, once or twice during the heating season, at least getting some compressed air blowing, keeping the wheels as clean and free of, of dirt as possible. Um, the bearings are sealed. So you're not gonna have any issues with uh, anything getting into the bearings per se. But as time goes on and you accumulate more dust and debris on the wheels, that adds weight to the wheels. It will off balance the wheels. Um, so we wanna make sure we prevent that. So keeping these clean, I would say, is probably the, the best preventative measure that we can take in terms of uh, prolonging the life of them. Uh, another thing you'll see that these guys are perfectly balanced. The wheels are slightly repitched, so we're getting a little additional airflow out of these guys. Motors are more efficient than the original one, so they're not gonna draw quite as much current. Um, we do that without sacrificing airflow. So that's a couple of additional nice features about these motors. So if you have any questions, um, what I'll do is we'll, we'll take a video after this, um, just to show you kind of a finished product after it comes out of the paint booth. It typically takes a, about a day for it to cure. Um, so that's what it looks like now. Yeah, so that's kind of the front of it. These are about, and again, I mean, this, this video will age in time, but the OEM cost to replace this is north of $500 usually. Um, to replace blowers and with some additional labor added, we can typically get you out the door between $240, $250. These things are very difficult to find. Um, I'd be surprised if, if any dealers actually had these things available. So if you've got the original one, it oftentimes pay, pays to send it, um, send it in, let us take a look at it. Or you can certainly purchase just the, the replacement blowers as a bundle and, and do the job yourself. There's a, a lot of folks that are more than competent enough to, to do the work themselves. So. Uh, if you got questions, my name is Jason. Uh, Jim, who you didn't really much see much in the video, he's the one that did all the work. Call us, either one of us. Number here is 262-989-4882. Uh, we've got a bunch of information on our website, which is fireplaceblowersonline.com. We'll see you here back in a second with a picture of the completed product. Thanks again, guys.